20 years ago, Google was founded, September 4th, 1998. It may seem like Google's been a part of our lives forever, but in fact, the company was only founded 20 years ago. When Larry Page and Sergey Brin were PhD students at Stanford University, they conceived the idea of Google for a research project. Their intention was to create a search engine that functioned with an improved algorithm for establishing how relevant a website actually was. Clearly, it worked, because today, we wouldn't use anything else. Originally, they called it Backrub, and if that name had stuck, we can't say for sure where the company would be now. 39 years ago, ESPN launched, September 7, 1979. Most of us can't remember a time before the 24-hour sports news cycle, but many would say that September 7, 1979 was the day that all changed. Anyone having a tough time in their career path will be happy to learn that Bill Rasmussen and his son Scott had both been fired from their jobs when they decided to establish the company that would become debatably the biggest sports media empire in history. The entertainment and sports programming network first aired on this day with SportsCenter and has been going strong ever since. Now, softball is one of those rare sports that everybody knows something about. Why? Because we all play it on Sunday when we drink a little beer. 61 years ago, Ford introduced the Etzel, September 4th, 1957. This is the Etzel, the car that is all its classic vertical grille implies. One of the most heavily marketed releases in automotive history turned into one of the industry's biggest flops. In the lead up to September of 1957, Ford teased its new division, Etzel, with mysterious ad campaigns featuring the slogan, The Etzel is Coming. They called its release day E-Day and offered over-the-top prizes, like a thousand ponies, to people who visited the showrooms. Sadly though, the cars couldn't possibly live up to the hype, and only a couple of years later, the division folded, ultimately losing $250 million, which is the equivalent of about $2.5 billion today. 39 years ago, Chrysler asks for a bailout, September 7, 1979. My excuse for coming to you is real simple. I'm running out of money, and I'm going to have to shut down. The auto industry bailouts of 2008 may still be fresh in our minds, but Chrysler was actually asking for government intervention decades earlier. In the late 1970s, Chrysler was considered the smallest of the big three automakers, and in order to continue operations, they proposed that the government provide $1.5 billion of loan guarantees. Chairman Lee Iacocca brokered the deal and convinced the powers that be that tens of thousands of jobs would be saved. By 1983, the loans had been repaid and Chrysler launched the Dodge Caravan, which brought them back to prominence. Buy or lease the all-new Caravan from your Southern California Dodge dealer. 15 years ago, the RIAA started suing individuals, September 8, 2003. I spoke to a lawyer, we're suing for millions. The early aughts were a tumultuous time in the music industry, with illegal digital downloads becoming commonplace. In 2003, the Recording Industry Association of America, or RIAA, took action that seemed drastic. They began to sue thousands of individual users who were sharing copyrighted material, some of whom were children. The president of the organization at the time was Kerry Sherman, who said, quote, when your product is being regularly stolen, there comes a time when you have to take appropriate action. None of the cases ended up going to trial, and many were settled out of court. 